Ladies and gentlemen, I think this is the world's first MR2 bug case swap. I think it's the first of all those. I freaking love spray paint. Uh, so I ground down the welds for two reasons. Some of them were not very pretty and I was kind of trying to make this look a little more factory than whatever I just did. So I thought if I ground the welds down a little bit, it might kind of give it more of a, just a simple look and there wouldn't be boogers all over the place. Um, so clearly you could still see where the welds were, but I think just having a little less texture definitely helped. So the, the blue that was on the sheet metal was primer, and then the paint I used was a uh, rust preventer. So it said you could put it straight on the metal, so I didn't. I just cleaned all the metal off. That was primed, so ta-da. Um, so I think once I get all that off, and then I need to trim these down a little bit, so I'll probably hit all of this again. But I just kind of want to see how it looks, and it looks freaking sweet. Uh, I don't know what's next, but I'm happy with that. Yay. Uh, set of shirt orders, guys. They're ready to roll. Shipping them out tomorrow. Woohoo! Good job. Thank you. Ladies and gentlemen, thanks to my tow truck guy, we got ourselves a complete running and driving RSX. Uh, it's a base model, but it has 120,000 miles, has the five speed transmission that everyone claims to be better than all the other transmissions. Uh, low miles, we get the, the harness, the speedometer, the ECU, axles. I don't think we can use the axles, but shift linkage, like literally. We could take that entire Honda and put it right there. So, uh, unfortunately, he did forget to leave the key, but that's fine because I have to, let me show you the shop right now. I have to make room for another car. <laughs> you guys just see kind of like a pan like that, right? So we have that much room with some clutter. Then the bug is right there. And then the Jeep is right there. And I got to fit another car in here. So basically, I got to clean up there real quick, put this on top of that real quick, pull this back, and then he's on his way back with the key, and then I could just drive that right in. So that's the plan. Once I get it in here, I'll show you guys the engine. He said it's ridiculously clean. I haven't even looked at the car yet, but uh, if everything goes according to plan, I can part that out and probably be in that swap for only a couple hundred bucks. I might even profit on that car. We don't know yet. I have some newfound information. Uh, the my friend that I bought this from technically has no idea that it runs, but the oil is so freaking clean it doesn't even look like it's on the dipstick. Well, there it pulled up at the bottom, but it is. Uh, there you can see it. Super clean oil. Uh, coolant looks good. And he, you know, he told me he stands behind it if it doesn't work. Blah, 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 blah. I'll get my stuff back and we'll figure it out. He's a good dude. I've been working with him for a while. Um, but the coolant looks good. No peanut butter looking stuff. Uh, also found out the key for it does not have the immobilizer chip. So uh, technically, I'm not ever going to be able to hear it run until I get that key made. And the plan is to take this entire wiring harness and put it in there. And you can bypass the immobilizer, I think, with K-Tuned or Honda, But I want to drive it NA like this for a while until we get all the bugs worked out so for the time being i need to get that key made and then uh hopefully the only the other lame part i thought i was going to be able to make a little bit more money back the hood has hail damage uh the fender i mean that might be it looks like one two three four five so maybe someone will buy that for cheap uh the door someone will buy maybe someone will buy this that's wrecked that's faded, uh, but the rear is actually super clean. The taillights are perfect. The trunk is probably, uh, the trunk might, uh, there's some hail there. Now uh, the bumper has a little scratch on it, but it looks pretty good. 
Um, the tires are super duper old, but the wheels are nice. Um, interior, um, I don't really know. Probably the door panels I might be able to sell. Uh, I plan on putting that in. There's a radio I could probably get a couple bucks for. So we'll see. Um, but yeah, so this is a huge step. Uh, so what I'm gonna do before I touch any of that, I'm gonna get that key made and we're gonna start this thing and we're gonna make sure everything works before I waste a second of time on it. Um, like I said, he's good on his word. If by a miracle, this thing doesn't, I mean, it's bone stock and old guy owned it. Oil is ridiculously clean. Coolant looks good. Everything looks good. I mean, that mo this motor might only be worth maybe four or 500 bucks, but I know that this one's gonna run. That's the trans everybody wants. I know it's gonna run, or I will know. So just peace of mind in doing it this way as opposed to buying something on Craigslist. Okay, so I have my turd bucket hooked up. There's no battery, but I wanted to see what the miles were, and that's definitely not what I was told. Um, however, it's supposed to not start because I don't have a chip key, and this gas is probably a million years old. And it starts. So that's good and bad. I am not happy about that at all, but it starts, so that's exciting. The radiator's already disconnected though, so I can't let it run for any more than what I just showed you. Buy and bought AC lines, radiator brackets, and the AC condenser for $30. So now I only have $965 to go, or $35. So I have $965 to go to break even. Regardless, I'm keeping it. It would just be cool if I got a little bit of money back because that did put me in a pickle because the money I paid for that was the money to pay for this shop. So if I get a little bit from that back and then make up enough in, I have a week to pay rent. So if I can make up enough on all the other crap, then we're good and it's worth a shot. To turn it sideways. Yeah. What? Yeah. <laughs> it's in. <laughs>
Okay, so the swap is out. Um, still really struggling with room, as you can see. So I still need to take all the wiring out of that and I don't really have any room. So what I wanna try to do is, I'm gonna try and slap all the mounts on. Um, I do have to switch the timing side, I think. I'm gonna triple check, but I think the timing side mount has to be switched out because this is a K20, not a 24. Um, but I'm gonna put the mounts on that I can. I'm gonna try and put it in the bug basically just because I want to and getting this completely out of the way will give me room to strip this for the I could probably finish stripping this in the next day or so and then get it out and then move everything back to where it was um so I need to there are two ways I could do this um you're supposed to set the motor on the ground and then bring this up or bring the motor up from underneath because I've cut so much out I think there's a possibility I could do it from the top. Um, it looks like the transmission almost sits underneath that. So if I can kind of cock the motor a certain way and slide it underneath, that might work. But I'll find out if that is or is not gonna work really quick. So I'm gonna give that a shot. And so I gotta take the buck body off and then I'm gonna try and do that. So that's the plan. So I don't know if this is the thing or if because I'm going from the top, this is why I'm having difficulties. But it appears I have to remove the AC condenser because it is touching one of the MR2's suspension parts that uh, is prohibiting that mount from lining up. It's cool, I found this out once I got that mount on. So I'm gonna have to lift the motor, pop that off, do this again. Here we go. See you, man. Holy testicles, I now know why people put these in from the bottom. Um, that mount I actually had on backwards, so I had this on the bottom and then vice versa. So it was putting this mount over here. So I had to lift it up, switch that, that went in. Um, this one, so realistically, I do need to put the motor up from the bottom. Um, cause this isn't sitting level and it's kind of fighting here, but we just put a bolt through that just so it wasn't putting stress on that and that. So this is literally just in here, uh, to make room until the RSX is gone. So it's sitting that way just a little bit, but it looks pretty decent. Um, so yeah, so now I have to, and it, everything clears. I took the AC off cause it was hitting that suspension down there or that, uh, brace. So that's all good. Everything's clearing. I do, I don't know if I mentioned this. Um, I'm sending this mount back and then Hux is going to send me a different one for the K20 because the K20 and K24s are a little bit different. So they're going to send me the one for this motor. I originally told them I was doing a K24 and then I bought this. So we're going to switch those out. Um, but that'll give me plenty of time to, I mean, I got to pull this out again and then do all the wiring. So um, I'm going to put the bug body on it and we'll see how it looks.
Ladies and gentlemen, I think this is the world's first MR2 bug K-swap. I think it's the first of all of those. I am so ridiculously tired. Um, I put a little strap on this side just to keep the weight up a little bit. I think that mount's doing fine, but just in case. Um, so now, <laughs> guys, this is, ah, this is so cool. This is what I've been waiting for. So as you can see, so imagine there's a, a trunk. I mean, look at all this. Okay, so I'm gonna try and show you guys the room. That's probably, I'd say if it was a straight line, probably a foot and a half, two feet. I mean, but then it comes down even lower here. So what I'm thinking is run, run these to here-ish, put a turbo right here, and then put an intercooler right here send that across or maybe do an intercooler at an angle and then intake is going to be right there so we can make a nice short simple efficient route we have tons we have way more room back here than we did on the other bug so this is going to be super nice for a turbo setup um, like i said for now we're just going to run it in a um, just until we get not it's probably only going to be in a for like a month i just want to get all the bugs worked out get everything all the little issues figured out before we add another set of things that could be problematic. So that's the plan. It actually, the intake manifold is gonna be a pain in the butt to work on, but everything else, I mean, spark plugs, oil filter is right freaking there. Like this is gonna be a cakewalk to work on. Uh, power steering pump's gonna go and took the AC off. So we're gonna, I'll, I'm sure there's an AC power steering delete for these. So I'll find that kit. Um, I don't know guys, this is a, uh, this is freaking exciting. Check it out. We're getting close. Um, somewhere in one of these Walmart bags, there's black uh, silicone. So I'm going to go around on all the edges that I didn't weld and silicone everything. I should have probably done that before I painted it, but whatever. Um, so now, I mean, technically, we can do several things. Even while it's running, we can start to mock up a turbo setup and then put the stock exhaust back on because it's going to be so freaking easy. So this is really going to open up a lot of uh, a lot of good opportunities for content. <laughs> I'm, oh, I'm so excited. Okay, I'm done. I'm pumped, but I'm done. I'm going to bring the Jeep and the RSX in. I'm going to go eat my first meal of the day. No, I had Mina bought me a burrito this morning. I moved Mina this morning and then came here and did this. So I'm gonna go eat and I'm gonna drink a bunch of water and go home. I am, that's a personal record for me. I mean, nothing's hooked up, but taking that out of the RSX in one day, I mean, start to finish in one day. The only thing I took off the day before was the air box. So one day took everything off, put it in this car, running or not, that's a record for, that's a personal best for me. So I'm pumped. Um, <laughs> Freaking let me know what you guys think. Tell your friends about this. This is about to get really cool. So tell your friends, let your friends know. I have a, uh, not a challenge, but just an idea I've had in my head for a while. If say one, say 25% of our subscribers told three friends about the channel and then say one of those three friends subscribes or checks the channel out, that's, you know, potentially 25% growth in you know, a matter of who knows how long. So if, if you guys have friends, you guys think your friends are gonna like this, tell them now, cause this is about to get really freaking fun. Now we can really start. I mean now, so we got the cage and the cage is actually gonna be way cheaper than I thought, which is cool. Hopefully I break even on this RSX. Um, I've sold, so I sold the hood fender, no hood bumper headlights for 200 bucks cause the hail had hood damage in the, <laughs> The hood had hail damage. The bumper had a bunch of rock chips, but um, so that and then $35. So I got $665 left, $765 left. Um, but I still have a bunch of good parts. So hopefully that all sells. Um, okay, let me know what you think. Tell your friends. Thank you guys for watching. Uh, hopefully this is just a new start of a tremendous amount of tomfoolery and craziness. I am sweating. <laughs> Okay, I'm going. Thanks, guys.